to the 37-yard line. First down for Davidson. And more time will tick off the clock. We'll take a look around the PFL. And we have a next stoppage of play. And Davidson doing this without all PFL center. Veteran Gilbert McLeod was injured last week versus Presbyterian, did not travel with the team today. So Barclay Briggs has anchored his offensive line to one of their best offensive performances of the season. Second and seven at the 30 yard line. Second drive in the second half for Davidson. Durkin keeps it himself. We'll get to the first down. Needed to get to the 30. We'll get slide down at the 24 yard line. 22 yard line, excuse me. So give him a gain of eight. Second first angle, first down for Davidson. And this is a Davidson offense that already has two games this year rushing over 300 yards. But they could throw in the ball downfield as well. Touchdown, Davidson. What a strike by Luke Durkin. Finds the junior, Max Weaver. A beautiful play, 22 yards. Touchdown, Davidson. And a hung ha hang half a hundred on the Hatters. Third game this season that Davidson has put up at least 50. Zuagi makes it 51. 518 left to go here in the third quarter. Your new score, Davidson 51, Stetson 20. Had a bit of some technical difficulties. Victor Anderson with you from Spec Martin Stadium, but the one thing that's not had any difficulties have been this, has been this Davison rushing attack. While we have a moment before we get to the kickoff, let's take a look around the PFL. Second quarter and Valparaiso. Crusaders up on Dayton 14 0. 120 left to go in the second quarter. Butler, Butler over Moorhead State 28 7. Drake retains their PFL lead. They win a low scoring affair over Maris 10 3. San Diego victorious over Presbyterian 23 13. Kickoff will be, kickoff lands in the end zone for a touchback. It'll be first and 10 for Stetson at the 25 yard line. It was 24 20 Stetson, 24 20 Stetson trailing. And then Davidson kicked the field goal. It was 27-20, Stetson had the ball. Stetson, O'Connor, Matt O'Connor threw an interception and Mason Sharon broke 194 yards for a touchdown. Another swing screen to Devon Brewer. Gets corralled by a trio of Wildcats. First on the scene, number, first on the scene, number 17, John Tessman. And we have another Wildcat down, cramping up. That's Darren Kindles. Again, it's not one of those days where you know you have to hydrate. It's a, actually a rather comfortable day. Temperatures in the mid-70s. But however, 
you still have to hydrate, otherwise those cramps might catch you like that. As a officials looking at up here at me at something. I don't know why they're looking up here at me. They're probably Oh, they had to reset the uh, play clock. Darren Kindles, the Wildcat down on the field. Again, you, you, saw, Col you saw Coulter Cleland down with some cramps earlier in this third quarter. And with this game all but in hand, you're going to likely see some players who don't many don't get much playing time get some opportunities here again you have a limited travel roster in the PFL and again Kendall's able to limp off to the sideline under his own recognizance So second and ten, the clock will wind as we t go now under five minutes left in this third quarter. O'Connor flush, finds Worthen Carr, breaks the tackle, has a first down, shoved out to the at the 42. So Jalen Worthen Carr with the 17-yard game makes it first and ten for Stetson. That's his third catch of the day. O'Connor throws it deep. Has Ronell Johnson once again. And Ronell Johnson has Stetson in the red zone. First down. Ball placed at the 18 yard line. Give him a gain of 40 on the play. First down. First and 10. O'Connor gets slung down. Ball is ruled down. And Julian Rollins, who was the vocal point of Davison's first quarter dominance along the line of scrimmage, in on the sack of O'Connor. Loss of eight, so it's second down and 18. Loss nine. Fall of, at the nine yard line, nine yard loss, make a pardon. Second and 19. 3.39 left to go, third quarter. Hatters will have Workinger and Worthen Carr stacked up top. O'Connor, once Worthen Carr overshoots his man, intercepted. That's Daniel Carter. He'll take the interception and the touchback. Carter with the interception. To go along with double digit tackles for the day. Okay, so the momentum. So his momentum took him into the end zone. So Davidson will. Davidson did have an interception. And all Mason Sharon did was take the ball and take the next play 94 yards to the house. One twenty, Davidson. Three twenty-six left to go, third quarter. And it'll be Luke Durkin back running this Wildcat offense. Colter Cleland afternoon, we presume, will be done. Once the deep ball is knocked in the air and almost ends up in the hands of Michael Leonard, the tight end. Just overshot the hands of C.J. Davis. So it's second and 10. Wildcats with the Hatter zone behind them. And 99 yards in front. Attention. 
Durkin will hand off to Adams. He'll pick up a cup. He'll pick up one to the two. So it'll be third and nine at the two. Nicholas LaRue on the tackle. Davidson, 51 points. That's been their average during his six game winning streak. Now trying to match Drake, who won earlier today, versus Marist. Durkin on the sideline has his man. That's Mark McCurdy. Just give them a little more breathing room. It'll be fourth down and four. Davidson for a second, thought about keeping the offense on the field, but with the game well in hand, it'll be fourth down, and we'll see our first punt of the afternoon for Davidson's Tristan Allen. Allen will punt to with two yards of room behind him. Devon Brewer back at the 45, and a timeout called by Stetson. That's the second time I'll call by the Hatters in this third quarter. So 205 remaining in this third quarter. Let's take a look around the rest of FBS college football. We'll take a look at the FCS scoreboard during the fourth quarter. There are already referenced earlier today Drake beat Bears 10 to three, so Drake will remain. Drake remains with no losses, so they're technically a half game ahead of Davidson. Again, both teams do not play in, this, in the regular season. Valparaiso leads Davis, these Dayton 14 nothing as they approach the end of the first half in Indiana. San Diego winners earlier today versus Presbyterian 23 to 13. Stetson will host San Diego in the regular season finale two weeks from today. That is a 12 noon kickoff here at Spec Martin Stadium. Again, we'll give you the FCS scoreboard during the fourth quarter. Allen punt gets it off. Brewer feels it at the 45 yard line, makes the first man miss. Does get some good yards to the 38 yard line. And that's where Brady Mites and the Stetson offense will take over. Actually, that's Gabe Atkin, excuse me, on the return. So Brady, Mi so Brady Mites will come on. Mentioned Mites last year versus Davidson. Torched the Wildcats for 398 yards and six touchdowns of 21 of 40 passing. Gets the pass off, that ball is caught. 10-5 touchdown, Stetson, just like that. Brady Mites finds Caleb Costner, touchdown Hatters. There were two Hatters on the far hash compared to one Wildcat. And Brady Mites connects with Caleb Costner on a touchdown pass of 37 yards. Makes it 51-27. Brandon Bush, who has taken over place kicking duties for Daniel Holbrook, makes it 51-27. So Mites comes in, first pass he throws to Caleb Costner. His, Costner's first touchdown reception of the season for the sophomore from Daytona Beach, 38 yard strike. Again, the Hatters continuing to show fight. 147 left to go in his third quarter. Davidson 51 and Stetson 27. Let's take a look around the FBS side on the top 25. Clemson up on the order today, 31-23, 207 left to go in the fourth quarter. 
Texas A&M over number 10 Ole Miss, 35-31. 434 left to go there. Number 23, Kansas State in a battle with number seven, Texas. Longhorns up by a field goal. Tennessee blowing out UConn. It'd probably be a more exciting game if they played a women's basketball. Tennessee leading 59-3. Number one, D. Ohio State lead Rutgers 28-16. 8-14 left to go in the fourth quarter. Number 18, Utah up on Arizona State 14-3. They're in the second quarter. Army shutting out number 25, Air Force. 20 to nothing, 13, 14 left to go in the second quarter. Bush will kick it off, a shallow kick. Fielded by the Wildcats at the 25-yard line. And we'll have great field position after the return down to the 43-yard line. That's where the Wildcats will have the ball. That's Aaron Carey on the return. So Davidson will have the ball first down. So now Luke Durkin. Who came in for Coulter Cleland, who left with cramps earlier in this quarter, will run the offense. He do a touchdown strike to Max Weaver on his first possession after taking over. First and 10, 43 yard line. And a big bruising run up the middle by Sam Valor. We talk about Sharon and Mari Williams coming into this game, and rightfully so. They've averaged over 200 yards per average, over 100 yards each in the last four games. But Sam Valor has given a nice change of pace. And Davidson will be content to run some clock. Aaron Myone to slap back to the right. Will go in motion. Valor to the left, to the right of Durkett. First and 10. Again, that slap back option. This time they'll pitch it out to Valor to the 35 yard line. He gets rocked. By Nakeem Reynolds. And a 13 on a. Lead speed on uh, the speed read option first down for Davidson. A nice contention of red and black made the trip up to from North Carolina. Will head back with the with their seventh straight victory, and still tied for PFL supremacy with Drake, who again won earlier today versus Maris in what was a what was the complete opposite of today's game. Maris. Falling to the Bulldogs 10 to 3. Mark McCurdy got the handoff, so a gain of one, and that will take us to the end of the third quarter. So Davidson scores the first two times. They possess the ball in the third quarter and find themselves 15 minutes away from a seven straight win. And a 6-0 mark in the PFL for only the second time in program history. We're through three quarters at Spec Martin Stadium. Davison 51 and Stetson 27. A busy day of action on the Stetson side of things. Stetson men's soccer on the road in Louisville, Kentucky for the A-Sun tournament. They'll take on Jacksonville in the 3-6 matchup later on tonight. And then Sets in volleyball will have their senior day tonight versus Kennesaw State at six o'clock. Watch that game on ESPN Plus with Evan Weston and the coach Cheryl Carlson will have the call on that one. And oh, he hits the upright. Uh, kind of a microcosm of the day for Stetson. Four quarters, second and nine as we come out. Victor Anderson with you for Spec Barn Stadium. Glad that you're hanging along with us. Had a little bit of technical issues in the third quarter, so we appreciate your patience and understanding as we worked through those issues. One thing that hasn't been an issue has been this Davis and offense. Durkin keeps it himself. Has the seam, has the first down, has the sideline. 
has a first and goal at the four yard line. Great decision by Luke Durkin. Again, on that speed option with the slot man leading the way. So Durkin kept it himself first and goal. And here comes Coulter Cleland to come in relief of Durkin. Valor in the backfield, hands off to Valor. Valor, he punches his way into the end zone, touchdown Davidson. So Sharon Adams and now Sam Valor, each with a pair of touchdown scampers. 57-27. Lucky will come on and make it 58. And he does. So Aggie missed his first extra point of the season in the first half. But then the, uh, the lone blemish in an otherwise nearly perfect day for Davidson. And the Wildcats up 58-27. 22 seconds into this fourth quarter. So Scott Abel will pick up his 41st victory on the season. 41st, 41st win of his career, Davidson, excuse me. And will now put him four wins away from William Younger to become the all-time winningest coach in Davidson history. And you presume if Davidson is able to get out of that first round of the FCS playoffs, presuming they get there, he may have a chance to tie that record, to have a chance to tie that record if they advance to the second round of the FCS playoffs. But again, Davidson and Drake will be 6-0 in the conference, and neither team will play each other at the final two weeks of the season. Davidson finishes their season at Moorhead State, and they finish the season at home versus Dayton. Stetson will finish season versus Valparaiso in San Diego. Kick over go. It will bounce into the end zone for a touchback. Worthen Carr had to avoid that ball touching any part of his body. Otherwise, that ball was, was still live. So Brady Mites will come back out on the field. Came on in relief of Matt O'Connor. First pass, first play to a 38 yard touchdown strike to Caleb Costner. So Davidson will improve to seven and two and six and zero in the PFL. And continue on their best stretch of football in program history. And this Davison defense has been stout, particularly towards the back end of the first half and all second half long. As Grant Reeder on the tackle. Great Reeder had the interception off the Matt O'Connor pass where he got pressured late in the first half. That helped set up that touchdown to Aaron Myone to end the first half to put Davison up 37-20. And for all intents and purposes, put the final nail in the coffin. Davidson's went on to score the touchdown in the opening possession of the second half to make it 44 to 20. And Sesson has been playing catch up ever since. Worthen Carr makes a nice catch with the right hand. That ball is caught at the, the put him at the 30 yard line. So it'll be third down and five. Coulter Cleland's afternoon will likely be done officially, and Durkin will finish out the remainder of this fourth quarter. I'm surprised that Cleland came in to finish up that drive. Third and five for Stetson. Mice claps, gets the snap. Finds Devon Brewer. Needs to get to the 35. And the officials say he gets to the 36. It'll be a first down. So Stetson picks up the first down as we are in the stat accumulation portion of the day. 
Davis it up 58-27. 13 minutes left to go, for quarter. Victor Anderson with you from Spec Martin Stadium. Appreciate all you Davidson fans who are watching our broadcast, especially, and of course, those of you who are synchronizing our broadcast with the Davidson Radio Call, our colleagues, Paul Roper and Mike Prasina, who do a phenomenal job on the Davidson Radio Network from Learfield. Gain of eight on the jailbreak screen. Makes up second and two at the 44. Davidson's defense allowed 354 yards per game. Brewer, patient, spins out of a tackle, falls forward to midfield, first down for the Wildcats. Look at Davidson's received votes in the latest FCS poll. Two losses have come by combined seven points. Lost 12 to seven in the opener to VMI. As that one goes through the hands of his intended target, Jalen Worthen Carr, there was some kind, there was some thumping around with Gabe Aiken. John Tessman whistled for the hold. And Scott Apel is going to uh, have a chat again with the officials. Hey. That's what they can always talk about, coaching the full 60 minutes in. Even up 58-27, he is giving the officials, I would say a piece of his mind, but I think he's giving them uh, the, entire, the entire mind with that last set of circumstances. Flag will come in, all thrown from the back judge. There was a block by Workinger trying to seal the edge on Sabian McLaughlin. But may have got him on the... Got him on the back of the eight instead of the front of the eight. And that's exactly what the penalty is the block in the back by Elijah Workinger. So it brings up, so it's 10 yards on the spot to replay first down. So bring up first and 15 for Stetson Ball is placed at the 46. That's what we'll have trips to the left side. Again, the officials just confirming that the proper down. Clock will roll as we are under 11.30 remaining. Mites. Looks left, man of pressure, it has Feliciano, he comes under it, Andre Feliciano, touchdown Stetson. Had a wildcat paw in his face, still got the ball off, got enough air under it, so Feliciano could come under it, makes the catch, touchdown Stetson. My second touchdown off the bench, 46 yard touchdown pass to Andre Feliciano, his second touchdown of the season for the redshirt sophomore for Robinsonia, Pennsylvania. Brandon Bush on for the extra point. Bush is still perfect on PATs. 11.06 left to go. Stetson continuing. This is the best offensive output of the season or tying the best offensive output of the season. Where they scored 34 points versus St. Thomas. Granted, they needed overtime to do that and they scored 38 versus Weber International. This is by far the best performance offensively versus a FC, an NCAA opponent. Scored 28 in their lone PFL win versus Presbyterian, 28-24. 11.06 left to go. Stetson down, 58-34. And what, and remember last year's game, it was 56-48 Davidson and they needed two overtimes 
at Richardson Stadium to get to that total. We're already at 92 points with still 11 minutes and change to go here from the land. We'll see what other fireworks are in store for us in this final 11 minutes and six seconds from Volusia County. Glad that you're spending it with us here on How to Vision. Victor Anderson talking to you. Again, Drake a winner today versus Marist. So Drake, awaiting the results here from Deland. Bush hand over and kick. Fielded at the five, fielded at the seven yard line. As a whole, through the outside to the 40, where he finally gets pulled down to the 42 yard line. And another good return for Davidson. So it's first and 10 for Davidson. They'll mark it at the 42 yard line. Davidson today has piled up 563 yards of offense. They've averaged nine yards per play. Durkin hands it off. For four, that's the first down. That's Will Cox, who's getting some run at, at the old, what they call the old back position. That's the lead back position in this option offense. So it's first down in Stetson territory at the 45 yard line. Cox 5'10", Jr. out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's averaged 6.6 .6 yards per carry. He has three touchdowns on the year. Trey Messer will be the slot back to the, will be the slot to the right. First and 10, 45 yard line. Messer in motion. Another handoff to Cox. This straight, this Davidson offensive line still churning up real estate late in this fourth quarter. The Hatter is down. That's going to be Tyler Lewis, who's arriving on the field at the 40 yard line. Tyler Lewis. Rotating in and out of that nose tackle position with Edward Hernandez. He is the hatter down on the field right now. Clock is stopped at 10.02 in this fourth quarter. Davidson with a commanding lead, 58-34. Uh, your head coach Ryan Young, and also if you, Chris Scott Abel as well. This final 10:02 is just about still playing hard, making sure you get out with any, get out of this game with no further compromises to your ball clubs, and get yourself ready for. The final two weeks of the season as Lewis is able to get up, greeted by a round of applause from the fans here in the land. So second and five at the 40. Clock will start again on the officials ready for play whistle. Davidson today has rushed now with that five, with that last carry of five yards for nearly 450 yards, and Durkin will add to that total and pick up another Wildcat first down. Luke Durkin came on mid third quarter where Coulter Cleland cramped up on it, had a, cramped up on his right side. Cleveland came in to finish off the next the last touchdown drive. And it's been Luke Durkin ever since. Durkin play action. Davidson still throwing downfield. All is incomplete. No flag. 
I don't know what the officials were lurking at, but Calvin West got held on the right arm. The officials don't call it. The Davidson fans with plenty of reason to be upset. Brings up second and 10. We will leave that last play in the pass. Durkin again, going again with that speed option. Pitches, flips it out to Cox. It gets tripped up at the 31-yard line. Rassi Littlejohn. Oh, brings up third down and it's a third down and eight. Third down and eight. Davidson four of eight on third downs. Cox, passes off a tackler, kills to the 15, gets tripped up, falls forward, it'll be first down at the 11. Nice block downfield by number 15, Kellen West. It'll be first and 10 for Davidson. Davidson making a loud statement this afternoon, proving that they are indeed the team in the PFL. Scott Abel, who has only had one losing season and is over a decade as a head coach, first at Washington and Lee, where he was a three-time ODAC coach of the year. Durkin breaks back outside. Hatter's trying to keep containment and a good touchdown save and tackle by Davion Maxwell. Durkin picks up six on that scramble, so it'll be second down. Davidson can still get a first down at the one yard line. And the clock, the friend of the gentleman from North Carolina. Play clock at 15, second down. Cox to the left of Durkin. He'll hand it off to Dirk. He'll hand it off to Cox. Cox gets stopped at the five. So it's third down. Third down. Oh, they say he got no gain, so it'll be third down and five. Third down. Again, third and five. Six thirty-eight and rolling. Durkin, face the handoff, little reverse. Hatters read it all the way, and Trey Messick gets slammed down by C.J. Davis. Davison tried a little trickery. They brought the they brought the lead speed sweep. Fought on the backside. Trey Messer and C.J. Davis stayed home and slammed him down at the seven. And they're gonna bring on the field goal unit to get them to, an e to, get them to 61. Aaron Zuagi will come on to kick the field goal. Zuagi today. He's made a 22 yarder, 22 yarder. Clock was running out. Davidson, Davidson will call their first time out of the half. Five twenty-six left to go, and Davidson will 
Made the trip back to North Carolina with the W in the ledger. Their seventh straight, sixth in PFL play. And Scott Abel on, will go into 31 and 12 in conference play as Davidson head coach. He's already the winning his head coach in terms of winning percentage with a 655 clip and will now be four wins away from surpassing William Younger as the winning his head coach in Davidson history. And if Davidson wins out and makes it into the FCS playoffs for the fourth straight season, they would need a Drake loss for that to happen. He will have a chance to tie the record in the first round of the FCF playoffs. But I'm sure Wildcat fans are thinking, let us focus on Moorhead State next week and hoping Drake can get bumped off in these final few weeks of the season. Field goal is up, and the field goal is good. Just past the outstretched reach of Jalen Johnson. So the 22 yard, so the 23 yard, so the 24 yard field goal is good. So Wiggy's 25 yard field goal, beg your pardon, is good. So 524 left to go. Davidson is up 61 to 34. Now we talked about Davidson's remaining schedule. Drake, who will be tied with Davidson at 6-0 in the conference, ends their season with Presbyterian next week and will be on the road in two weeks to end their season versus Butler. And you know Butler will have nothing more to win that matchup and give Davidson a chance to play for the conference title outright at home in the final regular season game at Richardson Stadium versus San Diego. That Drake Butler game, by the way, Davis and fans, that is a 12 noon kickoff on the 18th. So you get to watch Drake potentially lose and then you get to tailgate and get ready to maybe ring out Richardson Stadium with a conference championship as Jalen Worthen Carr with another nice return to the Stetson 35, 34 yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Hatters. Stetson with the loss will lose three in a row, seven of their last eight after starting two and zero. Will end the season at Valparaiso on Veterans Day next Saturday. That's a 1 p.m. kickoff. And then we'll come back to Spec Martin Stadium to finish the regular season on the 18th versus San Diego. That is a 12 noon kickoff for those Stetson fans who are trying to come to attendance. Asin Christian gets bopped out of bounds by Amari Hill. And see Aben McLaughlin, no gain, second down and 10. 4.55 left to go. Ball came on the field. <laughs> Uh, get tossed back in play, so we'll wind the clock at 454. Second and 10 for Stetson. Brady Mites at quarterback. Zone two touchdowns off the bench in the second half. Mites outside a late catch by Andre Feliciano. MJ Hurd Jr. was there. But Feliciano climbs the ladder, makes the catch. Good for a Stetson first down to the 47. 13 yard gain. All at the 47-yard line. And again, Mites torched his Wildcat defense for 398 yards, six touchdowns in that double overtime classic last year. Mites gets belted, and there will be flags on both sides of the field. So Zaya Jackson, look at the official. Another Wildcat down at the 42-yard line. Two flags thrown by the back judge and the line. 
back judge and the field judge. Devin Ken Darren Kendall's the hat that is the Wildcat down. Actually, beg your pardon, that is not Kendall's. We'll try and verify who the number is. All types of chaos and calamity on right now. Actually, it looks like that. Try and cl let's clear up the flags first. We'll try to identify the injured player. Penalties led to take the pass interference. That's Garrett Crockett, number 54. The player down for Davidson, and he's uh, not putting much weight on that right leg. We certainly, uh, and he's gonna, and he's gonna thankfully be able to walk. To Back to a sideline unassisted. Gets a nice applause from both sides, especially the Davidson fan base. Saw the couple of Davidson tents as I made my way into the stadium this afternoon. The Wildcat fans are certainly loyal and have plenty to cheer about. So I believe it's the Davidson Wildcats football parents who are tailgating behind the West End zone. Nice pass caught again. That's Caleb Coster. We connected on a 38-yard touchdown strike on his first play in. Will be a gain of one. So it'll be second down and nine at the 37. As we're under four minutes left to go. Davidson, 61 points. The number one scoring offense in the FCS. Number one rushing offense in the FCS. Throwing out, throwing out of bounds, so bring up third down. Davidson's offense today. They've gone for over 450 yards rushing. it out. Christian it's been missed. It's popped out of bounds at the say at the 29 yard line. So it'll be fourth down. MJ Hurd Jr. there. 105 points were scored last year's meeting. That went to double overtime. 95 points here today. But the result will be the same, a Davidson victory. Fourth and three at the 31-yard line. Stetson, one of one. Stetson's converted a lone fourth down conversion they had today. Mites goes on fourth and one. Wants Aiken. He has him down the sideline. First and goal for the Hatters. Abe Atkin with the first, with the reception, 28 yards, Atkin first and goal at the three. First and goal, Stetson. Bites, rolls right, has pressure, has a man wide open, is Atkin, his second touchdown of the day, but that will be called back, holding against the Hatters. Sebastian Christian, the freshman, held that, held that blitz a little bit too long. And it's whistled for the hole. So it's first and goal back to the 13-yard line. 227 remaining. Hatters have already put up a season high in points. But the 
defense has given up, gave up a season high in points as well. First and goal of the 13 after the hold, but timeout call by Brian Young. Final timeout for Stetson, and now Brian Young will have a conversation with the officials. Both coaches have had plenty of things to discuss and uh, plenty of clarifications that they've wanted to have, some of them that they wanted, some of them not so much. Yes, Stetson Volleyball will have senior night in two hours versus Kennesaw State. Okay, so the clarification, the game clock does not, did not set. So Stetson will still have their one timeout remaining. Mites, first and goal, over the middle, ball knocked away. Jack Weiss, actually that's Grant Reader on the deflection. Grant Reader had that game-changing interception on the shadows of the first half. And then a touchdown pass from Cleveland to Aaron Myone made it 37-20 Davidson and pretty much ended the competitive portion of this game. Might second and goal, has the corner, has Worthen Carr, threw him too, led him too far. That's the second touchdown the Hatters had missed because of an overthrow. O'Connor had a touchdown on the same side of the field on the second quarter to Andre Feliciano, where they had the three receivers set. The two receivers ran, cleared the path, and O'Connor just overthrew Feliciano. Mites did that there in the corner around the Worthing car. Third and goal. Mites for the quarterback keeper. Garrett, Greg Reader said no. But a flag on the play. Okay, unusually high number of penalties. Dixon Hudson whistled for the face mask, and it'll be an automatic first down for Stetson. Against Davidson, only averaged four and a half penalties per game. First and goal, Mites rolls right, wants Aiken. Mites will try and keep it himself. They say he stepped out of bounds first at the three. It will be second and goal. Second and goal, but we have another flag. The clock. So we have to set the clock to 152. So a second and goal at the three. Brewer to the right of Mites, three receivers to his left. Mites looks that way, steps up, has a man wide open, run. That's Ronald Johnson, touchdown Stetson. So Ronell Johnson gets into the end zone and the action still continues after the play. Brady Mites' third touchdown in a quarter plus. It is, makes it 61 to 40. This will officially be the second highest scoring game in modern Stetson history. The other one being Last year's double overtime game won by Davidson, 56 to 48. Bush's extra point is good, 148 remaining. 61-41, Wildcats ahead.
Stetson's offense has looked sharp in his second half under the direction of Brady Mites. He had their moments with Matt O'Connor in the first half. But again, that stretch in the final four minutes of the second half, the Matt O'Connor interception, the Mason Sharon 94-yard touchdown run. Officials trying to tell both teams, hey, let's go here. I think the officials are ready to get out of here just like everyone else is to get ready to head over to the Edmonds Center to watch Stetson Volleyball wrap up their home schedule versus Kennesaw State. Stetson four set win over Queens last night. Hatter's in a log jam for fourth in the A-Sun Conference. Five-way tie with Bellarmine, North Florida, Jacksonville, and Kennesaw State. If the Hatters went out, they will have the number four seed. That loss to Central Arkansas last Sunday looming larger and larger. If the Hatters have won that game and also won out, they would be in position to have that number three spot. Hatters set for an onside kick. Marshall Golick to do it. Get the high bounce. But Davidson right there to jump on it, right at the 45-yard line. That's Ke Kellen West. Stetson has one timeout. Believe that Davidson will just kneel out the clock and end this ball game from the land. Davidson has, need to reset the need to reset that play clock right now because the play clock started immediately. So first and ten at the 47 yard line. Early emptying that bench now. That's Tyre Henry with the carry, and that's L.J. Phillips Jr. Who had, who had battled for the starting quarterback position last year comes in as the third stringer. First down for Davidson. 130 left to go. Phillips hands out one off. That's to Seth Warner. Warner busts it to the 27 yard line. Second down. A gain of six. Davidson approaching 500 yards on the ground. They averaged 301 yards per game. They nearly equaled that in the first half when he ran for 245. Second and six. Presume this will be the last play of the game. And off again, Warner, he'll get the first down. 38 seconds left, and Davidson will, Davidson will just be content to, still running ball plays here. 21 seconds left. Phillips hands out one off to Robert Lamar. Lamar stood up at the 15-yard line. And that will be the final play of the game. A dominant performance from Davidson. A strong stretch towards the end of the first half. Proved to be the difference as Davidson comes away with the victory, 61 to 41. Stetson ends up, Stetson ends up today with three touchdown passes for Brady Mites, two touchdown passes for Matt O'Connor, but those two critical interceptions by Matt O'Connor late in the first half, including one with 18 seconds remaining that set up the bat-breaking touchdown from Colter Cleland to Aaron Myone. And that ended up being the difference as Davidson did not have a lead less 
and three touchdowns for the remainder of this contest today. Davidson takes the victory. Final score, Wildcats 61, Hatters 41. And a dominant performance to the FCS playoffs for the fourth consecutive season. For Stetson, we'll be on the road next week versus Valparaiso. We'll be back here at Spec. We'll see you over at 